dear students we are again starting our interaction on the intersection layouts in this series we have already discussed about the basic guidelines which are required for add grade intersections we also talked about the control devices and then towards the late we were discussing about the visibility requirements at an intersection which we have also studied when we talked about the side distances under different conditions on a road in today's interaction we are going to discuss about the attributes which needs to be taken care of when we are going to design an intersection and then we will talk about the various factors which may affect the layout design and in this particular area we are going to look at the factors associated with human beings the traffic road environmental conditions and the economic conditions and based on the time will also move into the another title here which is auxiliary lanes now let us start with the attributes for intersection design now when we are looking at the design of an any intersection there are so many elements which needs to be designed we have an approach there may be turnings to the left and right so all of these things require different type of the speeds which needs to be considered so as a first attribute we are looking here the design speed if you remember in the previous interaction also we talked about this in short and where we have only looked at one or the two components but here we are going to talk more detailed things and this will be not only related with the speed but the other associated features which also needs to be taken care of so when we look at the design speed what type of speed we are considering here is the approach speed to an intersection so we are reaching an intersection from a direction so what is that approach speed with which the vehicle is reaching this location and in the case of open highways then this can be also considered as an open highway speed now when we are in a built up area or when we are in a open area then what amount of value of a design speed can be considered is what being talked here so it can be 40% of the approach speed if this intersection is in a built up area or already developed area and it can be 60% of the approach speed in the case of an open area so when you are on a, a highway and there is an intersection so there we can consider this as a 60% of the approach speed then there is another possibility that when you are trying to provide this type of uh, intersection there can be the acceleration lanes deacceleration lanes or there may be a requirement that this vehicle which is coming with a design speed has reduced the speed to v and has further reduced the speed to v1 when it is taking a turn so there is going to be a transition from a very high speed to a some low value so those transition speeds are considered in the case of a design of speed change elements and these speed change elements like acceleration lane and deacceleration lane are there and we are going to talk about in detail about the acceleration lanes deacceleration lane further so that means when you are talking about those type of an aspect so here we are exiting the system whereas the traffic which is coming from this side and taking a turn and goes in this direction and then finally merges into the main traffic which is moving like this so there also there is going to be a change and this speed is going to be v and there may be a speed at which it is approaching and there is a turning speed which is going to be there here so there is an entry there is an exit all of these things are there and there is going to be a diverging condition at this side and there is going to be a merging at this particular side so entry exit merging diverging all these speeds are also other speeds which needs to be taken care of and this has to be looked at with respect to the speed at which the traffic is moving on a main highway in the case of rural areas we can work with the ruling design speeds as far as possible and this is one thing which we have discussed when we talked about the design speeds but then there can be restricted conditions also and in those restricted conditions the minimum design speed is also specified so if you remember in the plain terrain if you are talking about a national highway and a state highway then we have a value of 80, 180 as a ruling and the minimum design speed respectively so those those type of values can be considered depending on in what situation this particular intersection is working but when we are in a cbd area which is defined as a central business district
So, this central business district area is basically a core area where lot many type of businesses or commercial activities have been concentrated. So, in those areas we can have a speed which can be lower than the design speed. But if we are in the outer fringes of a city which can also be defined as a suburban area. So, in that particular area it can be considered as a bit higher also than the design speed. So, that is what we are trying to say here is that we are looking at the various types of scenarios and accordingly we are trying to take a decision. Now, the another component associated with the traffic is not only is it speed, but the volume which is there and that volume which needs to be catered at an intersection. So, when we are looking at this volume, then the volume which is being considered is a peak or flow. So, again if we talk about the intersection in this form, then there is going to be the volume V which is coming on this approach and then it takes a turn here. So, it can be volume V 1, it goes straight which can be volume V 2 and it goes in this direction that means taken a right turn then it can be volume V 3. So, we have V is equals to V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3 and that is going to happen from each and every lag whatever number of lags are there at that particular intersection. So, what we are considering is that whatever traffic is coming throughout the day if we have taken that counts then P car traffic is being considered here and it can be assumed as 8 to 10 percent of the daily flow if you have a daily counts available to you and here in this case the directional flow has been considered as 60 to 40 and this again we have discussed and there we talked about DDHV. So, you have to go back to the initial lectures to see this type of a value. Now, there may be a possibility that we are in not in a position to predict the values for a longer period then the stage construction or a stage type of a development is going to be there and for that stage period 10 years can be considered. So, we project the traffic for 10 years, we design the things and then again we have another projection after some time before completion of the 10 years and then that is how this is going to happen. Now, once we have talked about this then another thing is that this particular location where it is having 90 degrees may not be provided in this form and it may be in the form of a say a curved section. So, when we are looking at this curved section then this is going to have a radius r. So, this is another thing which needs to be taken care of and this is going to be dependent on the vehicles which are going to negotiate this curve. So, what is the size of the vehicle? What is uh, the speed at which those vehicles are moving? So, their length or the base length is also going to be there. So, and which particular vehicle you are considering? So, all of these things are going to make a difference here. So, we have to take a decision on the design vehicle. We have to take and see that how many such type of numbers are coming. It may be that we are talking about a design vehicle, but it is very negligible in number. So, we can have a some compromise in that sense and we can go to the next category too and the speed which is going to be there at the entry or exit. So, these are the points which are going to make a difference. Now, when we are looking at this, then this curve is also to be designed. So, what type of curve we are going to provide? So, there are different possibilities which may be there. We have already talked about a simple circular curve. We also talked about the transition curve when we have taken up the alignment design. Now, here we have one more which is defined as a three centered compound curve with offsets. So, single circular curve is one option. The three centered compound curve is another option. The transition curve can also be an option or there can be a simple curve which is provided with certain offsets and taper but then all of these are having their merits and demerits. If we talk about the single circular curve then it has an issue of off tracking and if you remember then when we talked about uh, the extra widening there we have looked at it that if you are going on a simple circular curve then off tracking is one issue which is happening because of the rigid wheel base and the units which can be there in that particular vehicle if it is a two unit system or so. so that means, there is an issue with respect to the provision of a single circular curve, but then we can have a three centered compound curve and again they are going to be an offsets in this particular case, but three centered compound curve means we are going to have three radiuses here. So, it is a bit complex in the way that it is going to be laid out, 
but it fits well with the wheel path. But while doing so, because the three different radiuses have been utilized here, what happens is because of the type of offsets which are coming, the paved area increases by roughly around 20 percent. So, you may be starting with something like 3.5 meters wide say lane, but finally it becomes something like say 4.5 meters wide or whatever the values are going to be there on the basis of those offsets. So, this is one issue here that means it is going to increase the cost of construction. And here the symmetrical curve is better if the number of semi trailer units are high. The symmetrical curve condition means that we are talking about R1, R2, R1 condition. So, from both the sides you have the same way of movement. Okay. And transition curves is another case where uh, it is going to follow very closely with the wheel path. It can also be laid uh, easily depending on what particular equation or type of a transition curve is being utilized. A simple curve if we are interested to provide then some modification needs to be done where it is in terms of a certain offsets and the taper conditions being created. So, if uh, this type of a system is being done it is going to be closely matching with the three centered compound curve and at the same time it will also help in reducing the paved area. The reducing the paved area means that whatever minimum is required that is there, but if there is a uh, say an expansion of it in the lateral direction it is not so as it otherwise is happening in the case of three centered compound curve. Now, again and again in the two cases we have been talking about the design vehicle. So, what type of vehicle should be considered here? Now, this is also going to be dependent on under what conditions and what type of road or what type of intersection we are going to design and therefore, the vehicle has to be taken into consideration as a design vehicle. Say if you are talking about intersections in rural areas, then we are going to consider either the single unit truck or bus which is 11 to 12 meters long or semi trailers which are 16 meters long or the truck trailers which can be 18 meters long. There are different type of vehicles which may be moving on the rural highways. So, national highways, the state highways and all those. In all of these cases as a compromise between the biggest vehicle and the smallest vehicle, the semi trailers are usually used as a design vehicle. But when you have an intersection with the minor road, then the single unit truck can also be considered as a design vehicle. If there is an intersection with major road, then again the semi trailer has to be considered as a design vehicle. If this is a suburban arterial section, then also the semi trailer is considered and this is also considered even for a speed change lanes as well as the provision of channelization and therefore, if the vehicle moves around it, then this semi trailer should be able to negotiate the paths provided around those uh, channelizations. So, what you are looking at is that most of the time we are talking about a semi trailer, but in some cases it is a single unit truck also, in other cases it can be a bigger vehicle too. If you are on arterial or sub arterial or non arterial urban areas, then the single unit truck or bus can be considered. If we are in the central business district which are provided in urban areas, then also the single unit trucks can be considered, but then it is going to have uh, uh, some encroachment on the side lanes when it moves and uh, that can be provided or that can be allowed uh, in the case of urban areas. If it is a residential area, then the passenger car can only be considered as the designed vehicle. So, these are the different conditions, different type of vehicles which can be considered and accordingly uh, we are going to talk about that how the turnings etcetera have to be designed. Because in all of these cases when you are talking about these design vehicles, there is a turning radius. So, the steering is going to be there and at what angle the steering is possible in a most smooth manner and that is going to define the turning radius. So, uh, that is the reason that we are going to consider different type of vehicles because the turning radiuses are going to be different. And then if we try to provide so in this case if the turning radius is something like this. So, this section also needs to be made smoother in that form. So, that the vehicle which is coming and negotiating can negotiate very easily in this side. So, that is where as I said that we have uh, the design vehicles and therefore, the turning radius has to be considered. So, there is going to be some minimum turning radius which needs to be provided and this is dependent on the various type of vehicles. For passenger cars it can be taken as 7.3 meters. In the case of single unit trucks 12.8 meters. 
For semi trailer or single unit buses 12.2 meters, for large semi trailers 13.7 meters and large semi trucks as 18.2 meters. In the case of passenger cars this can vary from 4.5 to 7.3 meters depending on the size of that passenger car. So, we have small so cars as well as big cars or SUVs etc. And for trucks and buses it can be varying from 9 to 15 meters. So, this is a one common uh, type of a range in which these radiuses are going to vary. And three centered curve or that compound curve which we have taught or a simple curve with an offsets or the spiral that means the transition curve they can be used. So, that when you are trying to trace out this particular minimum turning radius then uh, these vehicles can be accommodated. So, these type of curved sections can be created. Now, when we are looking at these then uh, the width of the lanes at the intersections are going to be there depending on that what are the inner radius at that turning, what is going to be the design speed. So, for the variation in that we are going to have the different values. Say, if you are looking at the design speeds it is changing from 18 to 64 kilometers per hour. And based on that the inner radius of that turning is changing from 10.5 meters to 150 meters. There can be two scenarios one is we can have a single lane road another can be a two lane wide road. So, in the case of single lane road then as you can see that uh, up to certain values the things remains same and then after that there is a change. So, the values are changing from 5.5 meter as a single lane width to 4.5 meters as the design speed increases as well as that inner radius is increasing. Similarly, when you are looking at the two lane width which on which the traffic may be moving in one direction on a two direction then it is changing from 11.5 meters to 7 meters. So, that is a change which is there. Now, in the case of single lane road one additional thing which is being specified what it says is that on that single lane road if uh, the vehicles are being allowed to park on one side then in that case the width has to be increased and the width increase has been something like from 10.53 meters against 5.5 meters for a design speed of 18 kilometers per hour to 6 meters against 4.5 meters. But this is going to be done and only applicable when you have a longer slip roads which are more than 60 meters long and then the parking is being allowed on one side of it. If that is not a case then we are going to stick to the values being given in column 3. Now, the next thing which we can look at is that what are the various factors which are going to make a difference in terms of the layout designs and these are the factors which we are going to talk about. We are going to look at that to human characteristics because of that what are the various specific elements where the change can be there or the traffic factors some of the things we have already discussed about we said we, we are going to look at the, uh, the design vehicle we are going to look at because of that design vehicle what is going to be the minimum turning radius and all. So, uh, those are different things which uh, are there and which needs to be looked at and similarly in the case of road factors, environmental factors and economic factors. So, let us look at these one by one. So, in the case of human factors the very first thing is a driving habit. So, there can be different type of drivers who can be classified as say safe or normal or they can be unsafe or they can be adventurous. So, different type of categorizations can be there. So, these people may be driving a vehicle on a speed V1 and this on V and this on V2 and there may be a possibility that this is greater than this. And this has an implication on turning radius because if the speed is higher then you are going to have more of the turning radius required and therefore, this area which is going to be occupied for that uh, intersection is going to increase. Then ability to make decisions. Now, this ability to make decisions is going to be dependent on say uh, we can talk about uh, age we can also talk about say experience. So, those are the things uh, which are going to be there. So, you have already gone through a situation previously. So, you know that uh, 
as a driver what you have done and how you have averted the unsafe situation. So that experience is going to make you help and in that case the decisions which you are taking which culminates into the decision and the reaction time being talked here is going to reduce. So if you are not going through that then you will probably obviously going to reduce the speeds you are going to try to judge that what is happening on that particular road and then will take a decision. But then what you will found is that this reaction time is going to increase in that particular case. So driver expectancy is another thing and that is going to be coming out of a design which is universal in nature. So we are, we are providing this type of thing then the expectancy is going to reduce because now and then the driver knows yes this is how I am going to negotiate this particular intersection or traverse that particular intersection. But if that is not there and if you are going to make them understand make them uh, first of all critically analyze that what is happening ahead on this particular intersection then this is going to create again a problem. So what is expected by a driver is also on the basis of the capabilities and the limitations of the drivers as well as their vehicles. And in that direction we should try to see that uh, as far as possible the movement should be along the natural paths. So when we are going to drive and how we take a turn at what particular radius we are going to take a turn at a particular location uh, that itself is going to tell us whether our design is uh, going to be comp in compliance with that or not. If it is not in compliance and it is infiltrating into that area or a path along which the driver is going to make a, a turn then there is going to be collision or if it is very short of that then you will found that a lot of buffer space is being left. So we need to take care of that. Another element is the pedestrians. At an intersection if there is a lot of uh, developmental activities are there on the sides specifically in urban areas then the pedestrians are going to be there and they are going to use the intersections to cross to the other side. They will be walking along the uh, roads also so as to reach that particular location. So if the footpaths are being provided, dedicated crossing locations are being provided then it is fine. If that is not there and if we are not controlling the habits of the pedestrians at that particular location under a given situation then this also going to be a problem. So that means we need to take care of the facilities at an intersection for these type of users also. Now in the case of traffic factors. The very first thing is the design and the capacities because when you are looking at that you have to talk about uh, the volume which culminates into demand and that has to be looked with respect to the capacity of the element. So this type of a trade off will define that what should be the size. So if we are going to have lot of turning towards the left it means we should provide an exclusive left turning lane. But if there is not a significant turning it is quite insignificant at a particular location then the uh, through lane itself can also be utilized for that. So likewise we have to take a decision. Design our turning movements means we talked about like the peak or traffic has to be considered for the design. So what are the various movements which are there? We already said that there is going to be through, there is going to be left and there is going to be right. So there is some volume here, there is some volume on this side coming out of this total volume. So what are those turning movements? How much is that amount? That has also to be taken care of and accordingly again it is going to impact the size. It is going to impact the, the, the characteristics of the vehicle they are going to impact as we have discussed in the previous one. Specifically the movements, the turning movements, the, the radius at the turning all of those things are going to be affected. What type of movements are going to be there? What is going to be the vehicle speed? Are transit involved, public transportation, the buses are there. If the buses are there at what location in which particular lane they should be? Can we mark those things at, at the intersection so that there is no interaction or interference across the modes? So vehicle crash experience if it is there. There are different type of crashes which can happen. There can be a head on collision, there can be a collision from the back from the sides. So are we providing uh, the various types of remedial measures for those different type of crashes which may have occurred at a particular intersection because of the different type of movements which are taking place. 
So, they are correlated in that sense. So, we have to look at all of these components and then finally, what is the mix of the traffic? We do not have a single type of vehicles on our system. We have different type of vehicles from starting from this very small one to the very big one. So, what are their mixes? How they are going to be controlled? We have discussed about it in few things like if there is a bicycle, a lot of bicycles are there at that particular intersection. Then we should try to provide a separate small lane so that these bicycles can come to the front and then there can be a bicycle box at the front where these bicycles stops and stands and then a priority is being given to the bicycles to cross the intersection before the motorized vehicles starts. So, that sort of a policy is going to be a culmination of the mix which is there and the percentage of different type of vehicles in that particular mix. The road factors, road factors many of the things we have already talked about. We talked about the vertical and the horizontal alignment. We have talked about the side distances. We have talked about the right of way which is available. We also talked about in our this interaction on the intersections layouts about the intersecting lags, 3 lag, 4 lag, multi lag systems, the angle of intersection. So, are these at 90 degrees or they are more than 60 degrees or they are less than 60 degrees. The conflict area which needs to be minimized by way of different measures and one of the measure we are going to talk after some time in terms of channelization also. The speed change lanes which we are going to talk that is in terms of uh, acceleration, deacceleration lanes. The geometric features are also we are going to take up and then the traffic control devices we already looked at it. We talked about markings, we talked about signs, we talked about their placements or uh, control devices and the placements at a different locations. So, they are already being taken care of. The safety feature has been talked in terms of the frequency of the crashes. So, C is equals to A divided by under root of Q into Q. The need of upgradation in the future is always there and that is dependent on the traffic volume and its projection. So, this is uh, another thing which can also be looked at. So, many of the things we have already discussed, there are few things which we are going to take up in subsequent discussion. Now, when we talk about the environmental factors, the environmental factors does not only specifically talk about the climate, it is basically the environment of uh, the intersection system. So, when I say the environment of the intersection system and I am talking about uh, this 4 lagged intersection, then whatever is the type of development which has taken place on all of these sides, this is also the environment of this particular intersection. So, when we are looking at this development, then the important thing is that what type of development is this? What type of uses are coming out of those developments? So, what are the land uses? What are the activities which are there? What is the amount of those activities? So, floor area dedicated. Now, these things they are going to create an impact in terms of what the impact is going to be in terms of the traffic pattern and volume. And with respect to this then we are going to have the size of an element. So, they are all correlated with each other, we have to look at that. The lighting equipment, this lighting equipment is also a one way of improving the safety at an intersection. It can also improve upon the possibility of hazardous interaction of the motorized vehicles with the vulnerable road users. Say they have the pedestrians who are standing here and there is a vehicle which is coming from this direction and this person wants to cross and this is a night time and there is no ample illumination being provided here. So, there is a, always a possibility the driver has missed the pedestrian and they have a hazardous interaction at this location. So, lighting equipment, their height, what is the amount of flux which is coming at the road surface. So, height then the illumination at surface level than the beam angle. 
So, how much area is getting illuminated? If this much area is getting illuminated or only this area is getting illuminated, what is that? So, they are also going to make a difference and accordingly we have to make a provision of some space for putting these type of features. Then safety features which needs to be embedded in terms of the different movements and different things. Environmental factors then here we can talk about the climatic conditions or meteorological conditions. rainfall intensity etc all of those things. So, what are the possibilities of having a drainage and we have to look at that. So, there should not be a ponding of water in the intersection area, water should drain out and the economic factors. Now, when you look at the economic factors we are talking about n number of things which are creating an impact to the size of a facility. The very first thing which comes is the how much amount is there in your pocket to construct that. So, what is this cost? cost of creating a new intersection or cost of improving the existing intersection. So, that is one thing. Then relative change in the cost of operation of traffic, because this is a sort of a recurring cost which is going to be there. The cost of improvement is one time, this is recurring. So, this is also important. We have to see that once we have made those changes, the directions or the paths have been changed and whether it is going to make a positive or negative impact on the operational cost. Effect of controls on the developments in the abetting land. So, can we shift the those type of developments a bit away and can have a service road or frontage road in between. So, the traffic is not directly coming on the intersection and creating an impact to the through traffic and thus causing the hazardous situations on it. So, that is what is another thing which we need to look at. So, these are the various types of the factors which make an impact to the layout designs. So, we will be continuing from here with the auxiliary lanes in our next interaction. Till then, thank you and bye.